right? I'm gonna start off by saying Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawa Shai, Call Halal Yahawa Bahashim Yahawa Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father, according to the Paleo Hebrew, and Yahawa Shai is the name of our Lord, His Son, our Savior, according to the Paleo Hebrew. We are the nation of Yahshua, according to the Paleo Hebrew. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, the elect men set up to teach us truth in sincerity. Shalom to the sincere Akim that teach us truth in sincerity. And Shalom to the sincere Akwakim who believe. Lord willing, this be edifying unto the elect of Yahshua. So we're going to start off in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, and verse 11. And it reads <clears throat> He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So the Lord Yahweh Shai is coming to reward every man according to his works, okay? Now, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. And we know ultimately the elect is going to open that door, okay? Is going to hearken unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. But the two thirds, they're not going to take heed to the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Uh, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I was going to get go to something. Oh, the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3 and 17 It says Son of man I have made thee a watchman Unto the house of Israel Therefore hear the word at my mouth And give them warning from me Alright So pretty much you see the prophets rising up In, in every major city Across the world and, and it's like an extension of the Lord's hand To, to bring in the elect Okay The two thirds are not going to hearken Now, as for the two-thirds, let's go to the book of Proverbs. The, the, the two-thirds don't believe these words, okay? Let me go to Isaiah real quick since it did flip to that page. Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon okay and we're looking for the Lord to pardon our sins okay for surely we have sinned against a merciful power okay we are we are at fault so that what we're out here doing Isaiah 58 and 1 it says cry aloud Spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shrew my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins, okay? For we are a sinful nation, okay? Yahweh Hashem Yahweh established covenant with us, okay? And we broke it, okay? So now we're looking for the new covenant that's going to be established by the Lord Yahweh Shai. Now let's go to the book of Proverbs in regards of the two thirds. Con. And, and it goes into uh, how the Lord is stretching forth his hands, okay? Proverbs 1 and 23, it says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refuse. 
I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. And according to Ezekiel 3 and 17, we're given warning of Yahweh by Shem Shai, okay? We are simply the messengers, okay? It says, verse 25, it says, But ye have set at not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Okay, and we know the days that we're coming into. Okay, it, it's going to be judgment day for every man out here. Okay, including myself. It says, "I will also I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind." when distress and anguish cometh upon you and that's what the lord is coming to bring it says then shall they call upon me but i will not answer they shall seek me early but they shall not find me for they for for that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the lord and that's talking about in this time right now okay you got to fear the lord right now before the calamities come now let's go to the book of Amos. The book of Amos chapter 8 and verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So pretty soon you won't even be able to hear the words of the Lord, okay? Now let's read what times we're coming into. Jeremiah 30 and verse 6. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? As a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And that's the very time that we're living in. How you doing? It says in the book of Revelation 12 and 12, let's read it. And we're coming into the hour of temptation, which is the mark of the beast, okay? Revelation 12 and 12, it says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay? And we know that this kingdom is about to fall, according to 2nd Edges. Second Edges chapter 6. In verse 7, it says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Esau has this current rulership right now, okay? And how do we know that? According to Job 9 and 24. The book of Job chapter 9 and verse 24. It says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Okay. And the ultimate judge is the Heavenly Father, followed by the Lord and, and his chosen people. Okay. Now let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10. It says, A wise judge will instruct his people. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. And that word prudent goes into foreseeing the future for the good. Okay. It says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. 
and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. And that's why wickedness is, is covering the face of the earth right now. That's why the Lord is coming back to judge. It says, verse 3, it says, An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Now, verse 4 is the point. It says, The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And who is that one that's going to be set over it? The Lord. The Lord is going to be the ruler of the planet earth. Okay? How's it going? Uh, let's go to let's go to Revelation 1 and 7. And let's harp on how the Lord is coming back. It says Revelation 1 and verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so Amon. Okay? And that he that's coming back is the Lord. Okay? And those clouds are the chariots, the so-called UFOs. And it says, and every eye shall see him, uh, and they also which pierce him. And that's an example of reincarnation, okay? The Lord, when you, when you perish off the face of the earth, he brings you back every th third and fourth generation, okay? And I believe a generation is like 70 years, okay? I was reading in book of Jeremiah 30 and 7 Alas for that day is great so that none is like it It is even the time of Jacob's trouble Second Edges the 15th chapter Goes into it Second Edges 15 and 1 It says behold speak thou in the ears of my people The words of prophecy And to prophesy means to say before Which I will put in thy mouth saith the Lord Let's go to Jeremiah 28 and 8. Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence and this is this is another kingdom that's about to fall okay it says second edges 15 and 1 it says behold speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which i will put in thy mouth saith the lord and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true fear not the imaginations against thee let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. And that word incredulity goes into unbelief, okay? With that word being established, incredulity meaning unbelief, how's it going? Let's go to the book of Romans. Romans 3 and 3. It says, For what if some did not believe Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yet yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay? Back to the book of Ecclesi uh, Second Edges, the 15th chapter, and the third verse. It says, Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And that was a reiteration of, of the famine that's going to hit this place, okay? We're going to get that in the book of Matthew.
Well, it opened up in the book of Luke, okay? You can get it in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and you can also get it in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and I'm going to start at... Verse 9, it says, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. And we hear of wars and commotions right now, okay? It says, verse 10, Then said he unto them, that's, that's the Lord addressing the disciples, it says, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Okay? So a reiterated famines again. There's going to be a famine in the land, a thirst for water, and a hunger for bread. Okay? Let's go back to the book of Second Edges. The 15th chapter. Start at verse 5 again. It says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel to reiterate on the souls of the just complain continually. I believe it's Ezekiel the ninth chapter. Just give me one moment, loud. Let me read it. Right. It's the book of Ezekiel nine and four. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Verse five, and to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Okay, and we about to read on how the Lord is gonna send those angels and they're not going to pity, but we're about to read it. It says, Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children, and women, and come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary, meaning at the house of Israel. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So judgment is going to start at the house of Israel and it's going to come upon all the people that dwell upon the earth. It says, slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. So the Lord has no respect of persons. It don't matter if you're old or young, man or woman, okay? If you're doing wickedly, he's coming back to judge. Second Edges 15, we're back in Second Edges. It says, Second Edges 15 and 9. It says, And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, 
I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. And we as a people, we've already been delivered out of ancient Egypt. So this Egypt that is talking about is America. We can get that in the book of Revelations 11 and 8. Oh, I still got to bring out that mark of the beast. Revelations 11 and 8. And it reads, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay? And you can look up a depiction of our Lord right now or, or just look up the very name right and it's not gonna bring up the description of Revelation the first chapter verse 13 through 17 okay back in 2nd Edges 15 and 9 well we already read that and verse 10 we already read that we were just establishing the point that this is Egypt okay the house of bondage for this is the land of our captivity. It says, 2 Ezra 15 and verse 11, But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. The Lord is not going to leave a piece of this place standing. Okay? We can read that. Second Peter 3 and 10, we'll start at verse 6. It says, Whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. All right? And we know in the generations of Noah, how's it going, brother? And we know in the generations of Noah, the Lord flooded the earth. So now let's read it. 2 Peter 3 and 6, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So this world right now is going to be overtaken by fire. Let's read on. It says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So the Lord's only been gone for two days in the spiritual realm. It says, verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, so it's going to be a, 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 his hand is being extended. It is not going to be a, a person on the earth that's going to say, I didn't hear the word. Okay, verse 10, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12, it says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on, on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we are patiently waiting on the day of the Lord. You know, and, and Lord willing, we be a part of that hopeful elect. So um, 
to continue in the second edges 15 verse 12 it says Egypt shall mourn and the foundations of it shall be smitten with plague and the punishment that God shall bring upon it that uh, they that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail to the blasting and hell and with a fearful consolation and just just touching bases on that we read in two precepts uh, within this camp that famine is coming upon this land there's going to be a famine Salakia. there's going to be a famine of hearing the word it's going to be a famine of, of thirst for water and it's going to be a famine of bread now let's read on it says verse 14 woe to the world and them that dwell therein all right and everybody is in the world right now okay and woe means destruction how's it going brother it says verse 15 for the swore and their destruction draw nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands and the modern day sword is the gun okay if you ever seen the movie purge that's a that's a great uh depiction of what we just read it says verse 16 for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor prince princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power so they're not going to be care what the president say what the mayor said what the governor say they're just going to be doing what they need to do okay it's going to be a terrible time it says verse 17 a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able that's martial law when they lock everything down okay verse 18 for because of their pride the city shall be shall be troubled the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor and shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation that's the very times that we are coming into okay let me go to second edge of 16 and uh, I'm gonna start at verse 17. It reads, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? And this is the prophet Edris saying, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Because he's seeing the visions, okay? Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine, famine again, all right? The beginning of famine and great death the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear the beginning of evils it says what shall i do when these evils shall come behold famine and plague tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment okay let's let's uh jump to verse 37 Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall the plagues be, be uh, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrows sorrows shall come upon it on every side is about to get bad okay woe is me woe is me who will deliver me in those days let's read how we're going to be delivered okay jump to verse uh 70 it says for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, 
and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. We're going to be delivered by Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai, okay? Proverbs 18.10 For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it, and is safe. We're going to call upon the Lord. Uh, Zechariah 13 and 8. And I'll end it on that one. Lord willing, be edifying unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Two thirds are the nation of Israel. One third is the, the elect of the nation of Israel. It says, verse 9, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. So we're going to call upon the names Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai. Yes, we're going to be tried, but we're going to call upon the names of Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai. Proverbs 34 and 19. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Okay? And I'll end it on this. Ecclesiastes 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And we hope to be acceptable men in the eyes of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this is edifying unto the elect of the nation of Israel. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. The elect men set up to teach us truth and to be the leaders of Israel and who rule well. Shalom to the sincere Akim that teach this truth in sincerity. And Shalom to the sincere Akwatim who believe. Shalom.